has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's a pain-free Friday. Pharrell's going out. Minutes on the mahogany. Waxing it up. 100, 200. The bad seat. The day. The bad apple with a bad attitude. Hanging around a bunch of bad. Under bad tape. Bad lot. Bad dude. Bad breath. Bad attitude. Bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City Studios in the Pharrell Appalachia. Right across the river through the woods from where Granny just had a big old screwdriver with a fatty stick of Lodi Dodi Sativa in New York City. The Big Apple. Ooh. People dressed in plastic bags, directed drivers, some kind of fashion shake it up. She do the on up and come around, about to fight the party up. Rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown, but a mess is tattered, tattered. My brain splattered all over Manhattan. She do be shake it up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's on a rock and roll, but I like it, like it. Yes, I do, but I like it. Hey, what's gigging? I'm Pharrell, along with your boy Carver. Hi, this afternoon. Mafia running it with our boy Hayden Fry at LTN in Kansas City. Mo, a birthday roll call. Anthony Edwards, Black Jesus, 21 today. Lookout nightclubs. Kevin Johnson, former corner with the Texans, 30. Dominga Santana, 30. Patrick Reed, 32. He has no friends, though. Bills, former uh, running back C.J. Spiller, 35. Carl Crawford, 41. Will Allen, 44. Mark Mulder, 45. Eric Ginsky, 45. John Olerud, 54. Eric Dorsey, 57. Patrick Ewing, Hall of Famer legend, 60 today. Otis Thorpe, 60. Greg Kite, 61. Rick Bassetti, 68. Bruce Coslett, former Bengals Jets coach, 76. And Roman Gabriel, 82. The former Ram quarterback. Have a birthday to you. Have a birthday to you. <laughs> All righty. The Raiders beat the Jags in the Hall of Fame game that nobody watched last night in Canton, Ohio, 27 to 11. Carver High and I laid the two and a half with the double cover. Yeah, we got the Raiders scoring first, the TD, all of it today on C2C plus Doug Peterson, Josh McDaniels. Tony Busby doesn't understand why the NFL didn't talk to more of his clients. Didn't you get enough, Tony, when you got settlements with every one of these women but one? Didn't you get enough, buddy? You still want some more? How about some more TV time, Tony? Sean McVay on the show today as well. We got the Lions share coming up, plus Rob Reigns from uh, St. Louis Sports Page.com talking about the Cards Yankee series this weekend. Dr. Shivago will join us today. Dr. David Chow from Sports Injury Central will break down all the injuries around everything in sports. Scott Miller of the New York Times will join us to preview the Padres Dodger series this weekend in Southern California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should do be. Yeah, yeah. Josh Allen is on the show today. Plus, uh, we've got the Bills rookie singing sensation. You will not believe it. Carver High has found raw material. Mike Evans tweaked his hammy today. Mike McDaniel on the show. Plus, Bill Belichick, of course. John Harbaugh. We got Nate Hackett on the show. It's just very exciting. Kyrie Irving is allegedly in a good place with the Nets. My ass. LeBron and the Lakers had productive contract talks yesterday. So productive, no deal was made. We got today in Carver High history. It's very exciting. Mafia will talk UFC fight night tomorrow night. They have like an ultimate fighter title fight as well or something like that. And they make them all wear the same soft ass, tough, Tank top when they fight. I don't know what that's about. Cain Velasquez pleads not guilty to attempted murder, even though he tried to kill the guy. He didn't do it. I love how all these people, the mass shooters too. I didn't do it. I didn't kill 25 people. I didn't I didn't do it. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Uh, we got a Vogel back home run again. Buck Showalter on the show. Bryce Harper. How about your boy, Bryce, in the TV booth? We got it. Craig Council on the show today, plus Nolan Arenado getting involved. We got Mookie Betts, a big three-run shot. Otani, I don't know what Carver High was thinking yesterday. He must have been planning the drinks for the Iron Horse. 
by blowing off Otani, having not one, but two home runs. How about the Angels had seven of them and they still lost because they're hair dryer city. We got a Vladi three run shot. We've got a Rangers win over the White Sox. Valoria with a go ahead hit. Salvi Perez with a bomb. Maldonado with a bomb and the Astros win. We've got that for you. And some news about Aaron Judge. Plus, tonight's games around the majors will break it all down and try to make you some money. Big 10 no longer interested in adding Oregon or other Pac-12 schools. Big 12 title game stand at Jerry's World through 2025. Mafia and Pharrell still looking for an exit at 3 in the morning from the stadium as we were haunted by ghosts inside Jerry's World. Mafia has never been the same. Auburn quarterback TJ Finley gets a great NIL deal to celebrate. He went out and got arrested. <laughs> what a tool. Notre Dame uh, got a great recruit, a linebacker no one's ever heard of. The Premier League starting right now, the Gunners I'm taking over Crystal Crack Palace. We've got the Hotel Golf Championships going on. Carver High is the sheet of integrity in full regalia today. Grab a cold Guinness. It's brown. You can serve it to the kids. No, you can't serve it to the kids. We got a story today, Carver High, about serving kids alcohol. It is not a good scene, but this is a good scene because this is coast to coast. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to BBG, coast. That's where they win cups. When Stanley comes over there, give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it four and a half. In game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The, major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. You spend all this time, take your money, go to the window, make the bet, get the app, make the bet. You make all these bets. And then you come back because somebody asked you a question about your, oh, you mushed my bet. Oh, oh, you just, you know, you just did it. You just did it to me. Oh, man. Like, are you a clown? Like, like, did, 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 take the makeup off for me for a second. The Bostonian versus the book. The early line. He's going to play all 17. Barring injuries, we always have to say, we're not anticipating anything catastrophic. He'll play 17 games. Because Doug Peterson, that organization, needs to find out if Trevor Lawrence is the truth. I think he is. He was just in a bad spot last year. So the arrow is only pointing up for me. There's no point at this season. In week 13, if Trevor Lawrence is struggling a little bit, Doug Peterson is going to go to the bench. This is their guy, sink or swim. He'll play 17 games. I love him to throw for close to 4,000. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. That's why for betters, right? I'd look at that week one game very closely. I understand why the season odds are moving up and down. I, I get that. But week one, I, I'm not sure you're hearing it anywhere else. I think there is a realistic possibility that Watson is on the field for week one while trying to work out a suspension, knowing that if that suspension and that court case carries on until 2023, that $46 million base is at risk. So look at look at those week one and week two lines. I think for betters, that, that's where there might be some value. The Sports Grid Network.
Hey, my man. Remember how intense I was when I was in the league? Sure. But now, I'm retired. Got everything on chill mode. Chill mode, Mr. Garnett. <laughs> Boom! That's what I'm talking about. Big ticket hitting big parlays. Whose house is it? Big ticket's house. Whose house is big it? Big ticket's house. Big ticket's house. Woo! Big ticket's house. It's my house! What? <laughs> You got to get your hands on this BetMGM app and uh, you'll lead the life of the big ticket. I, I really believe that because you could have a ticket on a baseball game for $10. And if either team hits a home run, they're giving you 200 skins. Everybody's happy. Use the bonus code MLBHR2022. That's MLB home run 2022. Bet 10 bucks, get 200 if either cracks a home run on the BetMGM app. I talk more to that app now than I do my wife and children. Let's bring him in, Carver High. He's ready to start talking about NFL preseason football. Well, yeah, look, uh, pain day was back uh, last night, Scotty. Whether you knew a lot of the guys that were on the field or not, uh, at least for five minutes, right, you had to turn it on and just be like, oh, look, football's back. I mean, I even had to hear it from my wife. Like, I had it on in the living room for a minute, and she's like, football already i was like yeah, yeah i mean what are we doing here it's the hall of fame game in canton last night uh the raiders beat the jaguars 27 to 11 raiders cover scotty and the over so much for all that uh the hall of fame goes under every single year first yeah. touchdown of the year scotty amir abdullah takes it in for the raiders on nbc from the eight yard line, it is a toss to Amir Abdullah. Speed to the edge. And the season's first touchdown. Mike, get excited, Mike. <laughs> Mike Tirico getting involved in everything. He's calling. Is he doing the hotel golf this weekend, too? No, he's not doing the hotel golf, but that was the, uh, that was the first night, Scotty, of the new ensemble. Uh, on NBC that's going to be together, of course, for Sunday Night Football now. Al is out, uh, now going to be with uh, Amazon on Thursday night. So you had Tariko, Collinsworth, and let me tell you, uh, they got to work on Garrett uh, before the season starts. He's doing the pregame and the halftime now. Your boy Jason Garrett, uh, they got to work on him. He, he's, he's got a lot of work to do. Uh, before we made fun of that when they hired him. We, you know, we, we said, oh, good uh, luck with that. We, like, what is he good, going? Good he was luck. an awful coach. Now he's an awful broadcaster. They got uh, He could be a one-year wonder like Breeze uh, was for NBC last year. Uh, let's hear from some of the coaches last night. How about Doug Peterson, Scotty? Yeah, sure, we only scored 11 points. You'd like to see some more offense no matter who's out on the field. We sure would have. Here's Doug Peterson. Well, it's always concerning when you can't move the football. That's the, the object of the game. But, um you know, until we really honestly look at the film and really evaluate, uh, oh, you know, look at the uh, film, hey, look at the film in the Hall of Fame but, game. But that's something Come we on, have to take pride in. We have to be able to run the football, <laughs> you know, and, and be able to stop the run. They couldn't get a first down. That, oh, you know, stood awful. out to me uh, in this football game that kind of made the difference. Um, even against our starters on defense, there were a couple of significant runs there and, and a few screens that uh, just missed, you know, missed a few tackles, but. All things that are correctable, all things that uh, we can work on in practice yes, as we move forward. Here he is. Well, I think you're going to be hearing that a lot from Doug uh, this year because yeah. their starters on defense, uh, I'll give him this. The kid Walker looked good. Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. And that was it. And then everything else, those weren't starters. Those were all backups and rookies starting in the game. Uh, what it showed me was their uh, quarterback situation is bleak beyond – what's already bleak. I mean, uh, Trevor Lawrence, uh, let's face it, he was awful in his rookie awful. year, awful. But, you know, they blamed it all on Urban Meyer. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, uh, I don't. I blame it on him. Like, he's the one playing in the game. Yeah. Now, you can say the coach is terrible all you want. Good for you. I mean, the guy was a mess. And I'm sure he'll be better. They've already crowned him the best 
second year guy. Have you already heard all this rhetoric that he's going to have the oh. biggest season of all the second year guys? Best. I'm not buying that either. Uh, he is certainly not what we saw at Clemson. I'm sure he's, you know, certainly got talent. And at some point, it'll come to fruition. But this team is so awful. I mean, I said this yesterday. They haven't won in 20 years. They have not won in 20 years, uh, and they are awful. Uh, they had some kid in quarterback in the second half last night who played in, the, in that dopey USFL uh, for the New Orleans team. That's who was playing quarterback for the Jaguars last night uh, in the second half. Not a good scene. Here is Josh McDaniel, Scotty, of course, the new Raider head coach, and he says the big culture change that everybody wanted in Vegas, it is well on its way. Here's McDaniels. The people are great. Um, we inherited a lot of great people. Um, you know, I was really fortunate um, to have the opportunity to come here and, and, and really uh, see a, a great group of people that want to win and do it the right way. And then we've brought some new people in, um, and they're working really hard to, to try to be really great in their own area of expertise. And um, you know, and we're just trying to have a good day and follow it up with another Listen, good day. And like I said, I thought asses. we came here with the right mentality, the right approach um, for this opportunity, which we're going to take each opportunity in the preseason to do that. Yeah, we're grateful that we have four. Yeah. Um, I know maybe that yeah. somebody else won't like that, but I, I, I'm, I'm really happy that we have four opportunities to do this. You know, there's definitely some things that Please. we noticed during the game flow and operation that we can do better uh, and fix, and we'll focus on that this week. He played high school football at that stadium uh, for his dad, who was the coach yeah. when he was uh, at high school in Canton, Ohio. So it was kind of a homecoming for him. I, I was disturbed by just the continuing saga of Mark Davis's hairdo uh, when uh, they showed him eating wings last night. Like, well, do we need? There's that? no one in the like, family, nobody, like a best well, friend, a lover. Nobody can, like, you know, walk up to him and say, like, "Listen, bro, you got to stop with the bull haircut." Here's the Honestly. other thing. Like, if you see the guys having a meal up there in the press box, like, can we leave them alone? Like, if you want to show them so badly on the screen, can you wait till the guy finishes his dinner or, you know, that little t the 12 piece that he's putting down up there in the box? Like, can we wait? And he's got the wings in his mouth. Like, I mean, it's like Costanza on Seinfeld at the U.S. Open with the ice cream. You know, they had it all over him. Like, can you just let Mark eat his wings? And then go yeah, and like, show him on the on the TV. Like when seriously. I was at Carver Steak at, at resorts, I left him be with like fifteen <laughs> women around him trying to get his billions. Like you could, uh, every one of them was like, "How am I going to sleep with this guy? He's so ugly." Uh, we are uh, anything for so there money. You go the hall of, hall of fame game. Uh, everybody uh, will be inducted tomorrow, Scotty. Of course, which we now call uh, the Hall of Very Good. Uh, they'll put them all in. Uh, this yeah. weekend out there in Canton. Uh, it'll probably be early next week till we get the next steps of the Deshaun Watson saga after the appeals and whatnot. But yesterday, Tony Busby, Scotty, who represents all the women, he doesn't understand why the NFL didn't talk to more of his clients. Here's Tony. We made 10 women available uh, to the NFL. We would have made more available. But the NFL wasn't really interested in talking to them. In fact, in lieu of interviews, we even attempted to, to submit sworn statements. The NFL rejected those submissions. You should also know that none of my clients were asked to testify at the three-day hearing and did not testify at the three-day hearing. In fact, none of us, including my clients, were even informed of the hearing. We had to read about it in the newspaper, and we had to read about the result of it. We don't know what was actually presented. We don't know how the presentation was made. All we know is that none of the people that our firm represents were involved in that process in any way. I have no explanation why the NFL only spoke to 10 of my clients and only presented four of those 10. It really makes you want to scratch your head and wonder what the devil is going on. Well, they just don't want to uh, have uh, stories about their players being rapists on television. Pretty much.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. Play. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. Oh boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. Fantasy Sports Today. Is there any reason to believe that Mariota will start at all for any fantasy team this season. So he is drafted on a Superflex, but you're talking once again. He's outside your top 22, 24, so he's that reserve guy. Or if you want to take a shot, you know, late on, maybe he becomes something. As I said, I think Ritt is going to play at some point. Most of us, uh, you know, ask anybody, they believe Falcons are going to be a bad team. Only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is the lion's share. Brought to you by Bet MGM. All right, Carver High, uh, let's get it on. Strikeouts, homers, game props. It's time to put the engines in the water. Propo time. Uh, it certainly is. Let's get after it here. Not bad last night. Uh, a couple of those unders just hung on for us. Uh, Cueto stayed under. Manoa stayed under. Carrasco got over for you. So uh, we did pretty good with the Ks. We need to get some taters, though. You know, we always go big ball into the weekend on Friday, so we have some big ones for you. Let's start with the strikeouts. Dylan Cease tonight for the White Sox in Arlington against the Rangers. Seven and a half is the number. Plus, uh, minus 150 to the over. Plus 105 to the under. He has gone over seven and a half in seven of his last ten starts. Has a bunch of double-digit ones in there also, but... He is under in his last two. Uh, so seven and a half to number against the Rangers. Yeah, I'm going to stay uh, under here because uh, he's on the road down in Arlington. And I just think the, you know, the first game was like 3-2. I, I think that it's going to be a tough game. And I think the Rangers will be in the game. You know, I'm not saying that he won't win. I like the White Sox to win the game barely. So I'm going to stay under. Uh, I'm going to go over with Dylan tonight. Uh, I think he's been pitching pretty good. We're going to try to get over the rainbow. Yankees and the Cardinals in St. Louis. Now, I was thinking nasty Nestor Cortez, Scotty, uh, tonight going up against the Redbirds, but 
Then I saw Dakota Hudson's number. He's pitching for the Cardinals tonight. Three and a half for Dakota. Plus 125 to the over, minus 185 to the under. Now, look, that's a low number. He's gone under it in seven of his last eight starts. But I'm going to dangle this carrot out there for you, uh, Scotty. Yankees do strike out a lot. They do strike out a lot. And you're talking four strikeouts for Dakota at a pretty good number, plus 125. You want to take a shot? Yeah, I don't uh, think so. Uh, You know, I don't. I just don't think he's that good, and I think the Yankees are that good. I think the Yankees pound the crap out of the ball. So I, I know you turned on him apparently, thinking they strike out too much. You know who strikes out too much is the bum they got rid of, Joe, Joey Gallo. See you later. Uh, I, I think they're fine. Uh, not only will they not strike out, uh, they'll hit five home runs tonight. Five taters uh, for the Yankees tonight. We're going to have to get a few more. Uh, lined up here for the lion's share. Uh, Next, the start of a big series in Los Angeles between the Dodgers and the Padres. The Padres bringing all their new big guns into town. Tony Gonsolin, who has been the Dodgers' best pitcher from pillar to post, Scott, he gets the ball. Four and a half is the number, minus 135 to the over, minus 105 to the under. He's gone over in three of his last five. He faced the Padres last month at Petco and had eight strikeouts in that game. I'm going over with Gonsolin tonight. Yeah, I'm going over as well. A, because the Dodgers uh, own the Padres as far as I'm concerned, and they're playing them right at Dodger Stadium. Is that where the games are? Are they in uh, Petco? I think it's in Chavez Ravine. I like him uh, to win the game. I like him to go over that number, and uh, they're going to be talking about this vaunted Padres lineup all day, every day. That's all everyone talks about is how great their lineup is. It was so great last night they lost to the Rockies, which is like losing to a Little League team. So watch what happens this weekend when they can't hit in L.A. against the Dodgers. Uh, Finally, for the strikeouts, we are going to go to Robbie Ray of the Seattle Mariners. They have the Angels coming into town tonight. Uh, Ray's number is 7.5, minus 130 over, minus 105 to the under. He is under in three of his last four. A couple of those were some rough starts against the Houston Astros. He had 10 against the Angels uh, last month when he faced them in Anaheim. He did it in Anaheim. Now he's doing it in Seattle. I like the over. I think he's going to do it again. The Angels uh, beyond Otani are (laughs) horrible. Yeah, I'm going over with Ray as well. Uh, I think he needs a big bounce back after those Astro games. Uh, He's got the right team coming in town to be able to do it. All right, it is tater time. We need some homers tonight. I'm not having any of it here, Scotty. Now, I got robbed last night. They only played five innings in the Philly National game. All right, I didn't get all my at-bats for Kyle Schwarber last night. He eats the Nationals, so I don't care. I'm going back to the well, and not only that, it was 140 yesterday. Now it's plus 200. Schwarbaum against the Nationals tonight. Yeah, I'm going back with you because I was with you yesterday on that one. Uh, I love him against his former team to rock a home run, maybe two. Uh, another guy getting hot. Homer last night, a big homer, which we'll hear uh, later on on Coast to Coast, is Vladdy Jr., Scotty. He's got a bunch in the past week, plus 260 for him tonight in Minnesota against the Twinkies. Yeah, he hit one last night. I'm going to stay off of him tonight. I hope you hit it, though, for money's sake. But uh, I'm not feeling every night on the road. Next, you're looking for a lot of home runs by the Yankees against Dakota Hudson and the Cardinals tonight? Well, Anthony Rizzo, here's why Rizzo jumped out at me, Scotty. He's been very hot, and he's hit a lot of homers. And the price, plus 400 for Rizzo tonight. Uh, That's kind of what lured me in. But we could go with any of these guys if you like. I'll give you Judge's number as well. He's plus 195 uh, if you'd like to dance with him too. Listen, I'm not even kidding. Uh, Rizzo gets no love, but he's like top five in the uh, American League in almost everything. Home runs, RBIs. He's been absolutely incredible for the Yankees. They talk about Carpenter. I think Rizzo's going to hit one. I think Carpenter's going to hit one. I think Glaber's going to hit one. I think Judge is going to hit one. And I think your boy, don't call me Lee Trevino's even going to get in on it. 
everybody's hitting home runs uh, tonight, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's the same old story. Bombers, put on the pinstripes. Carpenter's going to go wreak havoc in St. Louis this weekend. They ran him out of town. He's going to come back in there and go off. I like that angle with Carpenter. Uh, plus 450 at BetMGM right now for Carpenter to homer tonight. Uh, of course, if he's in the lineup, but plus 450 for him. Uh, Jose, don't if call him. If he's in the lineup. If he's in the lineup. Can you imagine? Be. Are you kidding me? I, listen, Aaron Boone is not that much of a P that he's not going to start Carpenter in his return to St. Know. Louis. He's already on the field, probably getting ready with batting practice. That guy's playing. Plus 450 for him. Uh, Jose, don't call me Lee Trevino. Plus 675. I mean, look uh, at the money we're going to make. Him to, for him to hit a home run as well. Final one. Look, uh, Soto is getting used to it. Couple games with the Padres now, Scotty. Eventually, he's going to crack one. Juan Soto tonight. They may lose, but he may homer. Plus 350 for Soto. Yeah, I think they'll lose, but I could see him hitting one out. He's not afraid of Dodger Stadium or the Dodgers or anybody. They seem to have problems with the Dodgers, but I don't think he's afraid of, of doing anything anywhere to anybody. I'll, I'll buy that piece, too. There you go. Uh, let's get a lot of taters. We usually do well on a Friday night. All right, game prop time. Mets and the Braves. A lot of runs last night. Could we get that again with Anderson and Taiwan Walker tonight? I don't need that many, Scotty. How about both teams to score three or more? Mets and the Braves each to score three or more runs tonight, plus 105. Yeah, I think so. I think that uh, the bet, I think the house is like saying, you know, Walker's a 2-7, that they're not going to score three runs. That's the bet right there for me. I'm going to go yes on that. They both score three. Uh, the Blue Jays and the Twins again in Minnesota tonight. Looking for the Jays to win and over eight and a half for the game. Tyler Molly makes his debut for Minnesota. Berrios is going for the Jays. Jays win over eight and a half, just like last night, plus 225. Yeah, look, I took the uh, Jays and, and Berrios, and he gives up five runs a game, so... Eight runs to me. I mean, they'll have that by the sixth inning. The next one, my final one, I know you probably aren't going to be with me because you're looking for a lot of taters from the Bombers tonight, but maybe a slow start in St. Louis. Yankees and the Cardinals under four in the first five innings, and we can bust out after that at plus 105, under four, first five innings, sleepy start in St. Louis. I got to tell you how disappointed I am in you. Honestly, like, you know, I was going to buy us tickets to a Yankee game behind home plate here in August or September so we could go out and drink beer and watch our boys rumble I don't... in the jungle. And, and instead, you're giving me all this. They're not going to score runs. They're not going to hit home I... runs. Going to have a bad weekend. You know... Going to have a slow start. You don't you like know this guy. You don't like that guy. Why don't you go watch golf? and have your wife give you the business about watching football. Let me tell you how you'd Look. handle that woman right there. I got nine televisions, okay? If you uh, need a couple that you plenty. want me to send out to Strong Island, we'll just jimmy them into the back. My boy will come over with the, with the you know, stolen box. We'll hook you up. We'll get you a couple extra rooms where you can just, you know, have sports viewing and no tension from the missus. They, they're constantly giving me the business, these women, uh, and, and trying to keep me from watching sports. It's not happening. Yeah, I can't have it either. Here's my thing with the Yankees, and you know this. Since the All-Star break, yes, they've had some nights where they've, they've had a couple nights where they just they kind of look like they're going through the motions, like get me through August, get me through the dog days. That's kind of how they look some nights. And I got a feeling they go into that place, that Bush Stadium, the great Cardinal fans. I just got a feeling it's I, – I don't like the, what I'm seeing this week. I think I look a little bit like Carpenter. I think I can play Carpenter in a you movie. You get Carpenter in there. There you go. I look uh, like There him. is the lion's share from BetMGM. I got a good feeling about the taters tonight, Scotty. Let's go and get some. I mean, all we do is make people money. It's ridiculous. Yes. And then you're taking flack from Hot Nicole. It's ridiculous.
The Lion's Share, presented by Pet MGM. The early line. The Angels are awful. Like, they are absolutely horrific. I think yesterday was the first time all year long Caprillion had the ball, and Donnie didn't stop and make sure that we talked about a potential yeah. team total over against the team that he was going against. The Angels aren't even worth mention. Five and two-thirds, seven hits, and only seven strikeouts against the Athletics. This was really one of the more disappointing starts for Otani. Only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full them. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And God being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, and we have to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. friend Rob Raines of stlouissportspage.com joins us now to get us ready for the Cardinals and Yankees series at Bush this weekend. And I got to say, Rob, uh, the first thing I want to know about from you is, um, you know, the deal Montgomery to get the lefty, you give, uh, you know, Bader to the Yankees, the kids, you know, from New York, grew up a Yankee fan, et cetera. But he did. Uh, at great length, express how much the Cardinals organization meant to him. And when I saw Montgomery have his presser in New York, he was very upset about being traded to the Cardinals. And I said on my show, I don't think the kid understands literally how great a baseball town it is. Uh, it's a great organization. They win championships. They sell out. Uh, it's an in incredible atmosphere for baseball. And I, I believe the media there is soft uh, compared to the torture he has to deal with here in New York after a game. Uh, it's a one paper. Everyone gets along. People, uh, you know, have no problem with the media in St. Louis. The players get along with them. It's not like here where there's tension and stress and problems. I don't think the kid Montgomery knows what he's getting into. Bader knows. I don't think Bader knows what he's about to walk into. Can you talk about uh, what I'm talking about? 
It's interesting because Montgomery, one of the first things he did, he actually apologized to Cardinals manager, Ali Marmol, for how we, what he said about the trade in his New York press conference here. And he had a presser here yesterday as well. And, and I think he kind of, I think was speaking more out of shock after the initial trade and just that he didn't right. see it coming and, and was so surprised by it that I think that's why his reaction was and how he reacted that way. But he did say yesterday that a lot of the people that he knows in the game and people that uh, he's played with in the past who have also played in St. Louis had all reached out to him and, and told him how much he was going to enjoy being here. And one of those guys, of course, is Matt Carpenter, who was his current, was his current teammate and now on the Yankees. So I'll be back in town this weekend. Everybody's excited to see him. So, yeah, so I think he's, he'll come to grips with that pretty quickly. I think it was just he was speaking more out of the surprise and shock of the trade and going from a club that he knows is having such a such a historic season to a club that's you know tied for first place right now so it's not it's like, like he was going to a, a bad team but he'll he'll pick up on that and I think he'll he'll uh, be happy to be here once he kind of gets settled in and, and finds out exactly what's going on you know what um listen I think that uh there's another dynamic involved here as well I think that Montgomery, in my view, would not have been a postseason pitcher in the Yankees rotation in a series. Uh, he's an innings eater pitcher uh, in the rotation uh, up till this point in his career with the Yankees. And he's got good stuff. He's a lefty. I like his stuff, but he wasn't in their postseason plans. Uh, they already got Frankie Montas to say bye bye to Montgomery. But here's the deal. I think he can actually help the Cardinals pass the Brewers and get them into the postseason. He's that yeah. good, but the Yankees uh, don't believe that he is. Uh, he was not in their plans. Sure. Well, that, that's true. I mean, that's one of the reasons the Cardinals made the trade. I mean, not only the trade for him, but the trade for Quintana as well. You got two left handers in the now, and I think you know they probably would not have made this trade had Jack Flaherty not been hurt. You know, the majority of the year had Stephen Matz not gotten hurt again and outs probably out for the rest of the season as well so they needed uh, not only one starting pitcher they needed two starting pitchers and what this you know it's really basically they had Wainwright and Michaels and that's about it I mean they those guys were combined had pitched about as many innings as all the other starting pitchers that they've used this year combined you know for the other spots so this gives them some depth in the rotation to allow them to move a rookie who's done pretty well Andre Palante back to the bullpen which helps strengthen the bullpen and that I, I think you're right. I think, you know, they, they got these guys, John Mosaic, the day of the trade, you know, right after the trading down was over, you know, he was asked, you know, did you get, get two guys who you th would be happy with starting a postseason game? And he said, yes. So well, we'll find I, out. I'll tell you what, I, I think uh, I love Mosaic. I think that front office is a lot smarter than uh, they get credit for. I think that you constantly hear about Cashman and, you constantly hear about the Red Sox. You constantly hear about the Dodgers. And then nobody else hears about any other teams ever. You never hear about what's really going on in baseball. I thought those moves for those two uh, lefties. Uh, now, Quintana, if that's not genius, I don't know what is. The guy was never as good in Pittsburgh as he was last night for the Cardinals yeah. when he went six innings and gave up one run. He gave up six innings. <laughs> he gave up six runs every inning in Pittsburgh. I, I thought he, I'm joking. I thought he was decent in Pittsburgh, but I thought he looked a lot better in St. Louis in that Cardinal uniform. They're going to turn him into a badass in St. Louis, where in Pittsburgh guys just play to end up with the Yankees or the Cardinals. <laughs> Well, I think the thing that'll help him more than anything else is the defense. You know, you got you know five gold gloves, well four now without Bader, deep defensive players, especially in the infield. So you know he's going to get some ground balls. You know what the one thing about him and Montgomery both is, I think they've got some swing and miss stuff, which that's the thing the Cardinal pitchers didn't have. They're they're a more of a pitch to contact kind of team, and they need guys who can go in there and throw throw strikes and get people out and not walk anybody. So that's you know let the defense play for. It. If you can't get a strikeout, get a ground ball and and let the defense help you out. So you know that all the talk before the trade deadline was how the Cardinals were needed to go get Soto and have all that, you know, play, give up the farm system and give up a couple of the young, you know, regular players you got in the big leagues. But the, they didn't really need him. I mean, I, and I, it's hard to say that when it's probably the top two or three player in the game. He obviously would make any club better, but he didn't fill their biggest hole because he didn't pitch. So they they made the two moves they needed to make by getting you know Quintana and and uh, Montgomery. You know people talked about Montas too, but you would have had to give up. You saw what Castillo got. You saw what the Yankees trade for Montas. That would have been almost the same level of talent that the Cardinals would have had to trade to get Soto. So. 
Wow, Rob Reigns with us from St. Louis SportsPages.com. Uh, I have to ask you uh, about Bader so Yankee fans can understand how great of a center fielder this guy is. Uh, he does it all, gold glove. Uh, he's a baller. This guy can flat out play. They can move Judge back to right, and now they got Ben Attendee in left. Tell people what they're getting in New York in the outfield defensively. They're again a guy who's going to go get the ball. I mean, he plays you know hard every play. He he hustles. He dives. Makes a lot of diving catches. Uh, very takes very much takes pride in his defense, and he wants to be the the guy out there, the best defensive player in in the outfield and in, in the league. And and I think obviously he was last year. So he's got good speed. He's going to go get the ball. I mean, right now the problem he's got while he's on the injury list is he's got, he's dealing with a bad case of plantar fasciitis on his right heel. So right. they don't know exactly how long that's going to take to heal. He's in a boot for another week or so, and then he's going to try it again. He tried it once a couple weeks ago, played one game in Memphis, and said it was still hurting him. So, uh, but the, both he is signed for next year, which is something that was I think was important to the Yankees, probably just like. Montgomery was signed for next year, which is important to the Cardinals. So, you know, if uh, their hope is that he'll be back sometime in September and be good to go for the, the playoffs, and even if it's not a game that he starts, he can come in in the seventh, eighth inning and, and defense and, and still help you win a ball game. Listen, I don't want to get all medical on you at all. I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you this much. I've had double plantar fascia uh, on both feet playing basketball my whole life. I had it a few years ago. It is the most agonizing injury uh, you can ask any NFL player, any NBA player, any baseball player. You get it. You are screwed. It is absolutely brutal. But the one thing that freaked me out about him is he's wearing a boot. Uh, you know, nowadays, uh, I got rid of it by the the nodule roller, like, you know, aggressive three, four hours a day of ro grinding it out. And then what I hear now, Rob, is that the best way to get rid of that, some people believe snipping the... Uh, plantar fascia and cutting it, it's permanent. You never have the problem again. That's crazy. The best way to treat those things now is either PRP or prolotherapy. They inject once and five days later, it's like it, you never had it. I don't understand what that guy's walking around in a boot for, like he's got a Liz Frank or something. He's got plantar fascia. Why doesn't he just get the injections? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm sure they've tried different kinds of therapy, and I'm sure there'll be other suggestions now that there'll be different doctors involved with the Yankees. So, you know, I think it's more going to be a question of pain tolerance right now, you know, between the, now and the rest of the season, and hopefully you can get it fixed over the offseason. But, uh, you know, it's just, the problem, of course, is Bader is that it, speed is part of his game. You know, speed is a big part of his game, whether it's on defense or on, on the, around the bases and stuff, because he's not going to be a big home runner hitter or a power hitter or anything like that. And of course, now the advantage with being with the Yankees is he doesn't have to be that guy. So uh, I, I think he's going to try to tough it out and it's just going to be a question of how much pain he's allowed to you know he can suffer through and, and how much that affects his game until it gets the the winner to kind of figure out exactly what to do you can check out rob's stuff at stlsportspage.com uh, let me ask you about that was a huge sweep yesterday down three nothing to the cubs you come back win that take the nightcap arenado's jacking home runs goldie hit another one uh that was enormous do you believe that after the Brewers lost Hader and the entire team wanted to quit playing for the front office, they obviously were livid after they got rid of Hader. There were players, they literally went out and got swept by the Pirates. I mean, I mean, it was embarrassing. Do you believe that the Cardinals will take advantage of what is happening right now in Milwaukee with almost a player revolt? Probably. Yeah, I, I know one thing. I know that the fact that the Brewers don't have Hater was not a uh, something that the Cardinals were crying about. You know, I think that was something that they were very much happy to, to hear and, and understand they haven't had a hit off Hater in like two years. So uh, those, those all those key games that they have to play against the Brewers, I think they have seven games head to head left against them the rest of the season. So, you know, that, that, that was noticed in the clubhouse. And I think the club Cardinals clubhouse also noticed two things. I mean, they noticed that the uh, front office, I think, kind of filled the needs that they – players thought they needed to have, which was the starting pitching. And, and the trade got confidence that, okay, the organization thinks I can play here, and that's going to make them stronger and better players because they realize now that they're going to be here and they're going to play. Let me ask you about Carpenter, uh, his return to St. Louis. Can you even believe what he has done in the Bronx with the Yankees, home and away, the home runs, the RBIs, the doubles, the way he has 
uh, just absolutely just bombarded this team with excitement and everyone loves him. They, I mean, down to his mustache. I mean, this guy is now like the talk of the town. I think he's going to go back to St. Louis this weekend and rake. I don't think he's the same player because he doesn't have the beard. So I think that I, I'm not until I see him in person. I don't recognize that guy. So we'll see if it's a, if that somebody just faking out to his name. It's really not Matt Carpenter. But no, he's, I'm very happy for him because the last two years here were really tough, and you felt sorry for him. And he was a true, total professional. He showed up every day. He talked. He didn't hide. He didn't mope. You know, he knew he wasn't playing well. And yet he kind of gutted it out as a professional. And I, I thought really when he went down to Texas and didn't make that club and, and had to spend a couple months at AAA that he was probably done. And I, you know, was really sorry to see him, his career end that way, if that's the way it ended and go out that way. But now that he's bounced back and no matter what happens, to, you know, the rest of the season, no matter what happens in the future, he knows that he's had, you know, kind of a, a happy ending to his career and to his story because he's a very good player here for a long time. And, He's going to get a tremendous ovation tonight and all weekend, uh, you know, because of fans recognize that what happened to him. And, you know, the, the strange thing is that the last game that he played last season here for the Cardinals, everybody kind of knew it was going to be the last game, uh, was got a rain delay and they called the game with rain. So nobody got the, the crowd did get a chance to give him that last ovation at Bush Stadium last year as, as he went out. So they'll get their chance tonight. Hopefully it's going to be a great series. I can't wait to see how uh, the Cardinals do down the stretch and if they get in how they do against all these teams that are so tough i can't wait to see if goldie gets the mvp over riley because i think that kid riley's going off in atlanta rob always a pleasure thanks for catching us up on the cardinals good to see you have a great rest of the season and summer we'll catch up with you hopefully in the fall in the playoffs thank you i appreciate it thanks for having me be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The Bostonian versus the book. Yankees have gone anywhere from plus 800 to plus 400 in this game, down 6 nothing, and now it's plus 570. It's like literally batter to batter. You have no idea what to make the number. And the person making the bet has no idea what to make the number. It's 6 right. nothing in the second inning. What do you move it to? You move it to this, you keep moving it like the Mets yesterday. You keep moving it until somebody right. takes it. That's mm-hmm. all you keep doing. The Bostonian versus the book. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action, 
from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Liu, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. Marlins and Cubs are scoreless in the fifth at Wrigley. I'm on the Cubs in that game. I got to tell you, Carver High, uh, I just saw that uh, EPL lineup for tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, uh, every single game's on Peacock. Uh, they're only showing one game on USA at 12.30. By 12.30, I'm not watching some uh, English soccer game to save my ass. Uh, I refuse to add another uh, service to my bill that's already over a buck and a quarter with 15 other services. I can't take it. I think that's what's wrong with, uh, frankly, sports and particularly the EPL. You want to know why nobody in America watches soccer? Because you got the games on a hidden channel that everybody has to pay for, like they're getting porno at a hotel. I'm not doing it, and I'm not watching it, and neither is anybody else. It is amazing because when they first got the rights, uh, they did it really well. I mean, they had the games on all different channels, uh, all the channels that they had. I mean, this is when they had NBCSN. They threw games on CNBC, on USA. Like, right. they had games all over the place. There was only maybe one or two games you didn't get. And now, uh, ever since they brought the Peacock into the mix, um, you don't get hardly any of the games on over-the-air TV. And they put one game a day on USA. They'll pro I think Sunday morning they have the Man City game, uh, maybe. But you're right. If you're going to show the USA game, give it something in the 10 a.m. window before everything else starts, you know, baseball, 1 o'clock, etc. Put a 10 a.m. game on USA. That's, That's what uh, NBC Sports Channel did. They would run yeah. the morning game uh, at the very least on Sunday morning. You get up early. You don't want to deal yeah. with anything. The dog, the kids, the wife, <laughs> this or that. And you go down, you have a cup of joe, and you turn on the game. And I'm watching. I'm betting on the game. Now I got to fly to Africa to see a game. I got to wow. spend $1,000. I'm not watching the EPL. You know what? You can have it, London. Stick it in your ear. I don't even care. I, I just... I'll watch the World Cup. You think the World Cup will be on television? Are they going to ban yeah. that for us too? No, we'll have it. We'll have it.